<laughs> well, hey guys, I guess I didn't get the memo. You're all wearing blue. I'm wearing green. Well, I'm, I'm wearing green, actually. I'm wearing green, and uh, it's because I wanted to match my shoes. I have, I was mowing the lawn earlier, and it's still, you can see the stain on there. So. Oh, are we on? Yeah, are you? we're on. Yeah, we're oh. On. Oh, well, you did right then. I just, I guess I we just need put to my foot up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hey, welcome. It's good to be with you again. I tell you, we've so enjoyed these times together with you, and, and we're looking forward to this one because we've got another special guest for you from right here in the Treasure Valley. Um, a lot of our members are, are still around here, and uh, uh, this gentleman is another one that's well loved and we get questions about especially when we go to a certain state on the western side of the uh, united states uh, we get uh, all kinds of questions about this guy. new mexico is that it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no we we uh we love this gentleman and let's just have him come up Doug, come on out here oh, yeah. <laughs> six, six Good foot, to man. Six six foot distancing <laughs> <laughs> so Doug. You're, you stayed here in the Treasure Valley. Yeah, still living here and yeah, actually living in Meridian. Okay, and uh, you sing from time to time with uh, the group from Canada, right? Freedom Singers. Yeah, Freedom Singers. Sign the basket, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good group. And then, yeah. uh, so what else is, what, what's going on right now? Update well, the folks here. Just, you know, working with all the virus stuff that was going on. My wife is now working from home, and it looks like she's going to get to continue to stay oh. home. Oh, wow. So that's a blessing for... She seems pretty nice. I think nice. that's a blessing for me. <laughs> she seems pretty, she seems pretty nice. nice. It's a blessing for her, for me. I've got to get out of the house now. <laughs> but, uh, but we're doing good. We're building a new home in Star. So oh, wow. That's keeping us busy, so... That's but, exciting. Uh, other than that, just uh, building tables and plugging yeah. along. <laughs> the star and is the living star. For those of you who don't know, no, uh, Doug got into doing some woodwork um, <clears throat> and beautiful stuff. High end tables, cabinets. Phenomenal. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Outstanding work. Yes. What's yes. your um, Cre creations by Wiley? Creations by, by Wiley. Wiley. Yeah. Yeah, you got on my back porch, you've got. Oh wait, no, you haven't built that for me yet. Have you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Bitter. <laughs> He's bitter. <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, hey, those of you who know Doug and, and were around when Doug was, was in the group, you know he's got a powerful voice, a powerful yeah. solo voice. And we thought this is just a great song to come back and sing one of his uh, numbers that he was known for.
<laughs> Those of you that have been watching all the time, you know that we tape these earlier in the week. We tape them in the morning. I tell you what, that's hard to do. That was getting up there in the rafters. <laughs> a little bit of ibuprofen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's well, he traveled with us quite a while, <clears throat> and uh, he is from California. Yes. <laughs> And it's nice to be in Idaho where we can get a little closer here. And, Definitely. Uh, but That's right. uh, maybe you could share with uh, the folks uh, us a memory that you have of the quartet. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's so many. I mean, uh, there's a lot of good ones and some bad ones. <laughs> but, uh, but, no, I was, I was edit, actually... Edit that right <laughs> You probably won't. I was actually thinking this morning while I was getting dressed, I was putting on my t-shirt. Yeah. And there was always a discussion on the bus about t-shirts, mm -hmm. whether or not you wore a crew neck, which mm -hmm. I like to wear, yeah. I like it to show. Very and good. Royce was more of the opinion of it the, should the be a v-neck. Neck. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll probably get comments about it. Either way, as long as it comes up the hair. <laughs> and I'm a hairy person, so You're telling me. I tried <laughs> I, I tried to hold out as long as I could and not conceive. Yes. And I wore a crew neck. And one night I thought, you know what? I Royce just want me to wear this V-neck and I don't have any V-necks. So I thought I would be smart and I took a pair of scissors and I cut one of my crew necks and I kind of folded it back. Mm -hmm. Well, wearing my earpiece, the cord got caught in the shirt. And I don't think I ever told you guys this. Oh, this is how the world works. Through, right? <laughs> but through the night as we were on stage, yeah. every time I would move, the cord would rip the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so by the end of the night, my t-shirt was open all the way down. And the cord was caught in my hair. And it was oh. pulling it. And oh. So the whole night I was constantly... <laughs> <laughs> trying to get that undone. And afterwards, a guy came up to the table and he goes, I'm assuming you're hairy. <laughs> I'm saying, no, I'm so, not. No, 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 <laughs> he's hairy. <laughs> but there was a lot. I just want to say I appreciate you guys having me. And, and this is cool. We're going back out on the road together. I quit my job this morning. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. Well, hey, Doug, it's been great to have you. <laughs> oh, no, it really has. Thank, Thank you for guys. coming to doing this. Have nice a great rest of the week. Will, welcome. Yeah. Nice we, should have, we should have best with that new house. Thank you much. That's, that's exciting. Exciting. Honestly, I wasn't that strict on what they wore. It's just, uh, you know, if you if you want to sing with us, <laughs> you want to be next. <laughs> Looks good to the people. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. But, uh, I'll tell you, some of our greatest fans are Doug's parents, Nadine yes. and Harold, and uh, followed us and they have just been so supportive of the ministry through the years. And I'm sure that Doug would have a story about his folks and specifically his dad. I'm going to oh, yeah. give it over to you here. Cause... Well, you know, uh, <laughs> this Sunday uh, is Father's Day. And when it was Mother's Day weekend, we sat down and we told a few stories about our mothers. And I thought it was very appropriate that we do it again. We got a lot of great responses from that uh, episode. <clears throat> and so I thought it'd be good if we just told a quick story about our fathers. And, and just so you know, some of you that follow Liberty know, um, Philip's father passed away about 18 years ago, from 19, 19 years ago from yeah. cancer. Yeah. Um, my father passed away uh, 11 years ago from cancer. Um, Royce's father passed away was it two years two two years ago on on Easter Sunday morning yeah I remember that day well and uh, so will actually is the only one whose father is still living and with us nice. um, but the other thing that uh, that you need to know about all of our fathers is that we grew up in Christian homes and we had wonderful examples of Christ's love and uh, and, and I think that's just vital yeah, these days, absolutely. especially as you look around. Uh, and I realize that's not the norm anymore, you know. <clears throat> it used to be, you know, you could kind of look at it and, and think that was the norm, that, that there were uh, Christian godly men uh, raising families. And it's just not the norm anymore. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, but I guess, you know, I'll go ahead and start. 
<laughs> my father, uh, I was thinking about it before we came today, and I think the, the thing that uh, I gleaned the most from my father, uh, and I guess the reason I'm thinking of this is that I just got done remodeling our bathroom, you know, and, and just working and, and doing all this stuff. And, uh, and another thing that I do uh, for my family to try to help make ends meet is that I do all the mechanical work on our vehicles at home. Uh, you know, I, I hardly ever take a, a car into a garage. And the reason I can do that is because my dad just taught me all that stuff. And it wasn't that he necessarily sat me down and taught me exactly, but he, whenever something would break in our home, he would fix it. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> today, uh, <clears throat> today's day and age, a lot of things, uh, a lot of these young whippersnappers, I guess I shouldn't just throw everybody into a, a barrel here, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, some folks, if something breaks, they just head to Walmart, you know, they get a new one or whatever. Uh, but where I grew up, my dad would just fix stuff, and that's, I kind of grew up with that, and so I had that mentality in our own home. I try to just fix things and, and uh, renew them, clean them up, and uh, so, and I love so much uh, that he taught me that, it was just one of the things that I really appreciate about my father. My dad's name was Harold, just so you know, Harold Ellis. Yeah. Well, he worked on cars a lot. Is that he, where you he did. How to work he, on cars or? he he was a mechanic. He was kind of a jack of all trades. He was yeah. a mechanic for a little while. He was also a butcher. Um, so oh, he knew. Uh, so you cut meat too. That's no, what, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't learn that from him. That's what happens when you're in a larger family. You, oh yeah, you do what you have to do. Yep. Yep. And that's what he did. And uh, speaking of large families. Yes, <laughs> baby of eight kids. <laughs> My dad, uh, Robert Batten, uh, people called him Bob. He could spell his name backwards. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Just like his mom and dad. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, you were speaking of spiritual things. I have two, two different memories. Um, we would have what people call devotionals. We called it worship time. So oh, we had okay. worship at Family night. worship time. Family yeah. worship, yeah. <clears throat> And uh, he would read a story, a Bible story, and then we would all get on our knees and pray. And usually by the t time of the prayer ends, half of the kids were asleep. <laughs> <laughs> there were exceptions where my dad was actually reading and it got really quiet. And sometimes he would just like ponder. But all of a sudden we hear... <clears throat> <laughs> so, there was no exception. He did some sleeping himself. But, you know, that was, it was really great that we, I learned a lot of Bible stories that way and stuff. And then um, my dad gave me my love for fishing. Uh, I remember, man, sleeping in on Saturday, you know, as a little kid, and all of a sudden we hear, Well, I'm going fishing. And man, we were up out of that bed in five minutes, ready to go fishing, because that was his way of telling us we're going fishing, you know? Yeah. And, Get uh, up now, or you're going to miss it. The best thing was that he got more excited about us catching fish than, even though he caught more fish than us usually, <laughs> but he would get so excited about us catching fish. Even as a, in my 20s, when I would come back and visit, and he that was the one thing that we would do is is go fishing, and uh, he would always be more excited when we caught our fish. That's neat. Yeah. <clears throat> My dad was definitely not a fixer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my, the mechanic of the family was actually my brother. Yeah. Know, that's kind of what he did for a living in the army. But uh, my dad instilled in me my love for Southern gospel music. So, oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> he he likes to tell the story of when he first heard Southern gospel music. It was uh, Gold City back way back in the eighties when. Brian Free was still with him. Oh, yeah. And he said, I wonder who that lady is singing for the city. Doug would always sing that about us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my dad um, is a bass singer. So he, he grew up, I grew up listening to a lot of bass singers. Jay Sumner, mm -hmm. you know, George, Tim, you know, all of them. And, yeah. Uh, that's where I got my love for bass singing. Royce is one of the best low down bass singers I've ever <laughs> Most low down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, that, that's mainly uh, the best memory of my dad personally. Yeah. I, I got to travel on the road with him and my mom when they had uh, the group back in the, their group back in the 80s and 90s. And then I actually got to travel with dad uh, 
with a group down in Kansas for about six years, hmm. almost full time. We were pretty much full time weekenders. And, yeah. You know, you get and, to learn a lot about your parents. Oh yeah. Going down the road with them all the time that you don't necessarily want to know. <laughs> but, um, uh, and just so the folks know, tell tell them your your father's name. Uh, my dad's name is Dave. 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 Yeah. And I and I can't forget my stepdad either, Dennis. Uh, he was a uh, with all this stuff going uh, around the nation right now, he was a police officer for oh, yeah. almost 25 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And retired and pretty much did everything you could think of on the police force. Yeah. Um, he was on the street, he was a dispatcher, he was in SWAT, he was. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, oh, what's the one that protects the president? Secret Service. He did, oh, wow. He did a detail for President Ford back in the, back in the oh, day. Oh, my goodness. Man. He pretty much did everything you could think of. And um, he's retired now, but living, still living in Topeka. And, but he he instilled in me a lot of you know good parenting things. Good. So yeah. I got a got a shout out to Dennis too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, Dave and Dennis and Bob sounds a little bit like my report card back in the days. But <laughs> my dad is Eugene, Eugene, and I didn't get any E's on my report card. <laughs> that for E's for effort. E for effort. <laughs> but Dad had a very high IQ, and uh, he graduated and got his master's and had a couple of masters. He was a registered nurse, the first uh, nurse to graduate, male nurse to graduate from Oregon, uh, University wow. of Oregon, where he went to school. That's cool. And uh, back in that day, when they had kids, had us kids, uh, the dad was not allowed in the hospital room. And uh, I'm gonna steer this a little bit different and I'm gonna talk about me as a, as a father. Uh, but he, he was a great Christian father. But my wife, Tammy, uh, we're, we're uh, videotaping this today on the 17th of June, which is Wednesday. It's going to air on Friday. But uh, her birthday's today. And oh, wow. uh, she was, uh, this is a bit of trivia, and you have to answer this without knowing what her age is already. If you know that, don't answer her on this Facebook page or YouTube, whatever. But uh, she was born on Father's Day. So you, know, you go back and you try and guess how old she, she is. <laughs> yeah. So Father's Day is a Sunday, so you have to go back up a ways to figure that out. <laughs> Getting ready for our first child, Jeremiah. Um, Tammy was uh, ready to go in one early morning, and it, it was a 17-hour labor. But uh, uh, Jeremiah was uh, stubborn. <laughs> On that. And we were excited, and she says, it's time. It's time to go to the hospital. And I and she was resting a little bit more while I kind of got ready. And I didn't turn the lights on. And I had a mustache trimmer in the bathroom. And I went to it and I just, I started trimming my mustache because I wanted it to look nice. And I didn't want the beard song to be sung about me. So, and, and uh, the attachment was not on the trimmer at the time. So I, I shaved off half of my mustache. And we went to the hospital that way. <laughs> And uh, so I've got pictures of, of that here. <laughs> we will not. Is <laughs> Will? Uh, we will not show on it. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's exciting to be a father, and our kids always make us feel so special on Father's Day and Mother's Day. Yes. Um, so we're looking forward to th this Sunday and uh, celebrating that. Yeah. But uh, I I need to say this about my wife. We were having devotions this morning. Could you get my guitar for me? Sure. And. Uh, and she was reading about fearing, F fear not, it says, and it's listed 365 times in the Bible. 365 times. Wow. 365 days in the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> just as we go through this, and we're on the, hopefully, the tail end of the yes. COVID-19, uh, just keep that in mind, not to, not to fear, because we know who holds tomorrow. And al along with that same um, devotion, she was talking about uh, the more that we get close to the Lord, draw near to Him, He'll draw near to you. <clears throat> uh, the less fear we have Amen. about today, the next hour, whatever that might be. And I have an old hymn for you. It was uh, written by Iris Stanville. And uh, when I was a teenager, I sang this in a church in Kent, Washington. And uh, a gentleman came up to me and said, man, I wish you would sing that the traditional way, the way it was uh, meant to be sung. Yeah, because I, I jazzed it up just a little bit. And uh, 
And I said, well, I'm just curious, why, why, why do you want it that way? And he said, because my dad was Ira Stanfield. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a good reason. <laughs> but he's not here today. <laughs> this is uh, one of my favorite hymns. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my sin. Now I belong to Him. Oh, now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Sin's degradation Jesus came down to bring me salvation Lifted me up from sorrow and shame Now I belong to Him Now I belong to Jesus Jesus belongs to me not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity, eternity. Continue to do that one. Uh, that's that's going to be the one that I start requesting from now on. <laughs> <laughs> when you need a break, you know what I mean. <laughs> that's right. Hey, you even hit some tenor notes. That was pretty good. <laughs> don't do that too often. <laughs> if you don't mind. Uh, when Paul, yep, sorry. When Paul uh, asked me to do the the devotional for today, and I'm going to try to keep this really really short. I don't want to have our video too long but um, I started thinking and, and we he suggested this song for all my sin uh, that we've sung in the past <clears throat> and it's one of my favorite songs that I sing and I, I, I was thinking about it this morning and praying about it and uh, came up with this because this whole thing of, of uh, if you read the insider last week I talked about a friend that sticketh closer than a brother mm. and uh, I've been thinking about how Jesus is my friend and, and what a true friend that he has been to me all through these years. And so I started thinking about the friendship and stuff. And one of the greatest friendships in the Bible was David and Jonathan. And if you've ever read that story, uh, it talks uh, where uh, in, in 1 Samuel 18 verse 1, it says, Now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as himself. How many friends do you have that are that close as a friend? And, uh, that, and so it always just kind of speaks to my heart 
And there was another one, uh, and I don't know, I read it this morning. I, I wanna, don't want to go too long. But where Jonathan, oh, First uh, Samuel verse, chapter 20, verse 17, Jonathan made a David a vow again because of his love for him, because he loved him as he loved his own life. Mm -hmm. And these were just two human beings. And what a great friendship that they had. And Jonathan knowing that David was going to take over as king, and yet he had that capacity to love him as he loved himself. And he would have given his life for him if it came down to that. And many times he saved David's life uh, as Saul was planning to kill him. He would warn David and, and make sure that David was not in that place. And uh, so it just, it shows a friendship that we can have with Jesus. And as we, uh, as we go into, uh, I was quoting in Proverbs where it says, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Mm -hmm. And we have that friend in Jesus. And Jesus uh, talks about that in John where he says, No greater love hath any man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Yeah. And that's what Jesus did for us. And uh, I'm so thankful that he did that for me. Amen. Even though I didn't deserve it. Even though there's nothing that I could do to be worthy of it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus. And Jesus was willing to come down and give his life for me. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And as we go into this song, uh, it talks about the love of Jesus and how great. And in that second verse, it talks about he became my friend indeed. And that's where the thought of, of Jesus being my friend, such a friend and such a love for us that he would pay the penalty for our sins so that we wouldn't have to do that. So we could live with him forever and ever. And in Romans chapter five, verse eight, it says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died.
Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, uh, tell them real quick where they can get your CD. He's got a wonderful CD that yes. you've used on your fishing. I have, videos. yes. Where can they get your? Well, it was on my website, but my website's set up. But they go to Creations by Wiley. Okay. My woodworking website. Just send them a message. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the title yeah. of that recording again? Now I Know Him. Now I Know Him. Yeah. Yes. And that was always one of my favorite songs you just sang, so thank you. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. thanks for being with us, guys. Really? Yes. Thank, awesome. Thanks for thanks letting for us join you again. Have a great night. Yes, have a great have weekend. Happy Father's Day. Yes.